In this acrylic pouring episode, I'm going to teach you why your straight pour is not coming out straight. Now, I'm not pouring any elbows, but it might just be you. Welcome to the Feel Good Horn Station, ladies and gentlemen, and you are looking at my colors. So, I've put them all on the screen, and I'm using any brand under the sun. I do not care about brands, and you shouldn't either once you get the straight pour technique under your belt. Now, I added a little extra color here. This is my special color. This is Emerald by TLP, and I also used Brulee, which is what is going into my cup, although it looks white. So in this video today, I am gonna give you some tips. Um, we're gonna do a twofer. Yes, you get two for the price of one uh, today, and I'm gonna show you um, different aspects um, of the pouring process with a straight pour and how tilting really affects your pour. Um, some of you all are doing great straight pours but you're not getting the look that you want and how you start that tilt really does matter. I also wanna show you that your paint brands don't matter. Your consistencies do not have to be perfect. Although a big misconception and misunderstanding about straight pours is you can make a straight pour with very thin paint, kinda of thin paint, Medium thin paint, thick paint, really thick paint, um, but every uh, viscosity has its pros and cons. And that's where there's a lot of miseducation and misunderstanding, especially for your more inexperienced poor. So I'm gonna give you a little of that today, um, a little secret, which is not such a secret anymore, but I am working on a course and I'm gonna include all of that. Um, we are months out from this thing, so don't expect it tomorrow, but it is coming. All right, so my white mix is uh, one part satin enamels to one part artist flow white. So that's mixed together one to one and then a two to one ratio. Um, the white paint is gonna be a little bit thinner than most of your paints, that's how you want it. All of my ratios are mixed two to one um, by volume and not by weight. And they are not all exactly the same consistency, but they're very close and you can see that with the end result, it doesn't matter.
All right, friends, if you haven't had the moment, if you would just hit that subscribe button for me, it's totally free to you and it really helps me out. Um, I'm really trying to grow my watch time. That's a goal right now because it's kind of low. Nothing I can do about it unless you watch. <laughs> but here I am uh, spreading out my paint. This is the same paint that went into the pour, uh, which we call a flow extender if you don't know. And we're going to prepare to tilt this thing. So we'll talk about a couple things, but just check out the gorgeous center we have going on. That Prussian blue is playing with that white, baby, baby. And it feels really good. It's really calming. And um, uh, this 2-4 is going to be up on my website and I want someone to buy it. <laughs> um I'm actually going to sell one piece and then you will get the other piece um, as a complimentary thank you. Um, I know someone out there wants this one or will want this one. You haven't seen it yet. But, yeah, so I'm going to do that. Um, it'll be up on my website. So let's talk about this tilting thing here. So you can see I just did a little bit of tilting and now I'm getting ready to go off one corner. Um, and this is where people go wrong. And they're kind of too two major ways that I tilt and generally I get the paint moving so I do small swirls which you'll see in the next um, pour but I didn't do that and I went to one side and what happens is a lot of you all don't have patience and you tilt too quickly and YouTube videos are very misleading in the time that it takes to actually make a painting as far as the time I take um, a lot of times we speed the tilting up, but we don't show it all because we don't want to bore you to death. But starting out in a circular motion and then going to one side, I generally go to the opposite side after that to keep the composition. But understand that I find it easier if when you start to tilt to keep your canvas orientation the same way and understand that during this process, it's going to get stretched out and look weird. But if you follow all the way through, that composition will come back together. Now here, I didn't follow uh, the side to side. I didn't get my paint and going in a circular motion. So um, I wanted to kind of show you what I see a lot of people doing. And then they just kind of just start tilting and they don't really have a game plan. Which this is still really, really pretty. But a lot of people want that classic galaxy style look. Um, and I'm going to show that to you in the next one. So now I have to make a decision on what I want to keep. I need to get some of the paint off my canvas. And now it comes down to preference and what you like. Um, so for me, I set it down and I take a minute to think about it. Now, in the video, I kind of cut out this time, but I will spend 5, 10, maybe even longer looking at the composition and figure out where I want to go. So there, I see something that I am ready to get rid of. So I plan my attack, if you will, and I will move the paint to get that uh, little piece off. And so in doing that, I realized that, oh, I really like um, how that white part at the top went off and created like another edge, if you will. So I'm just working the composition um, and trying to make it balance. Um, a couple tips is offsetting your center really helps with composition and balance. You don't really want a center um, of your galaxy pour right in the center of your can canvas unless it is really symmetrical uh, because it just feels weird and it's like oh something about this isn't right um, but here the center is off and the composition is definitely um, different from what you're used to me seeing but I worked it the way that I liked it Now that orangey white color right there that you see, that's actually the brulee. And when it dries, it should have a beautiful shimmer. 
Now, it won't be super, super pronounced because it's sitting close to that dioxazine purple, which is super light and also transparent. So it is going to take on some of that diox purple, um, but I think it'll still come out really, really pretty. Uh, this is one of my favorite parts of the painting, just the gradient change and all the color. All right, so here's your two, four. So I'm going to layer my cup and hush for a little bit. <laughs> So I'm not doing really anything different in the pouring of the cup. Um, the layering is different, but how I pour it, you know, it's pretty much the same. Oh man, I love that light blue permanent. It creates that gorgeous contrast. And then the light purple that's coming out, it's just so dreamy. Um, it's so calming and therapeutic. It reminds me of lavender. <laughs> So that dark color that's right at the end with the brulee is my oxygen purple mixed with black. Um, and I did that this time just to see if I could get a more dramatic contrast. And when we stretch out, it will probably lighten up some. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we are um, turning this thing. You can see I'm doing really small swirls, and it will look like your paint's not moving, but it actually is. So, let me tell you the game plan. You see that purple down there? I love it. But I don't want it to be too much, but I don't want to lose it all. And it, that it being so close to the end of my canvas, I will lose it if I just tilt it. So, what I'm doing is I am creating or changing the composition by swirling it so you can see i'm going to start wrapping that purple and that teal color around my galaxy if you will then i'm going to go from one side to the other so i'm actually going to go away from the purple first so that it will be really easy for me to tilt backwards and remove as much 
as I want or keep as much as I want. Uh, but I don't want to lose it all because then I ju it just loses to me the whole essence of the piece. Now, I did layer some white in between that teal and purple. And I bet you we will see that white really open up. So once I tilt it, I come immediately back. Um, and the video is sped up ever so slightly, once again, just for time's sake. But I'm going to be patient. Slow and steady wins the race. Now watch as this purple goes off. I can really control because I'm looking at the weight of my paint. And you have to be really mindful. Um, a lot of times, you know, this um, field of art is... Uh, it's mis misconceived, not coming up with the right word here, but people think it's just you pour it and that's it. There's a lot that goes into it, especially when you want to look. So you can see I got rid of almost all the purple, but I'm going to bring the weight of my paint back center and it's going to pull some of that back on. Um, and you can see my composition looks a little off, but it's okay. It is still very well proportioned. And now I'm going to work on the other two sides of my canvas. And I'm being very careful. I need to get that tip off, but I don't want to lose too much of my center. So I do a quick tilt and you can see that I'm able to keep that center. And now I'm going to bring it back center um, by tilting uh, my canvas the opposite direction. And you can see, baby, baby. <laughs> that composition is on point. Trust the process. It gets a little crazy, but keep your perspective and orientation. Um, try not to turn your canvas too, too much when you're tilting because it's hard to see the orientation if you keep changing it. Look at that purple, that lighter purple. Um, and then look at that light blue. It creates like a 3D effect. And I am really, really in love with this piece. Almost so much that I'm thinking that it should sit on my wall a while. But no, um, this is going to go up on the website. So here's a close up. Yeah, I know I have to bring you in close and just check out those fingerlings and those water drops, if you will, with that blue. Uh, my white is opening up. And maybe, just maybe, I was a little heavy-handed on the um, Artist Law Flow uh, because I didn't get as much cloud. But there is some cloud peeking through. Um, but I'm not mad because look at the outcome. Um, the brulee is really shining more because it's against that um, diox mixed with black. And the black is... Um, opaque so it doesn't take on the diox purple as much as it did in the previous pour Now, I must say I'm a little biased, but I, these are both really gorgeous. Um, so check out the brulee and that Pebia Blue Black. There's no color on the planet like this tube of paint, and I really, really love it. Um, I love the composition of both. It's subtle, but together these make for a really nice conversation starter. So these pieces, they're both up on my website. Um, they come as a pair, and I would really love um, to see someone with it. So check out my website, Garrett Brown Art Studio. And remember, family, do every single thing with love. Treat your friends, your family, and even your enemies with love. Until the next time, peace.